Okay, right, so we've scheduled a notebook. We've had it running and it exists already in Databricks. Now we're going to have a look at getting Databricks to write the transformations for you. So rather than using notebooks, have Data Factory generate it. So here's what I made earlier, kind of a data flow, taking some streams, joining them together, doing some changes. So let's start off with a blank data flow, but we need to understand what we want this to do. So we could go and just start coding things, but I think it's pretty useful to have a look at the notebook that's actually the basis of this. So let's go back into our Databricks and have a look at one of the demos that we've looked at earlier, which is the transform notebook. So that's taking some data and it's just adding some business logic, it's doing some transformation. So we're connecting to the lake at the top and then we're bringing in two data frames. So data frame that's our fact data or our taxi information and then data frame that is some lookup information, so our zone data, so a load of attributes that we want to add to it. And then we're doing a straight join on that, so we've got an inner join, join them based on location ID, rename the columns so we don't have duplicate columns. So that's our first step. Second step, do the same again, except it's an inner join this time. Sorry, I left out a join, my mistake. And then we're renaming the columns again. So join them with an inner join, join them again with an, a left out of join, and then we've got a single data set. Okay, that's what we're trying to replicate. That is some business logic, really simple, reference data lookup from a fact. How do we do that in Data Factory? Okay, so we've got our flow. First things first, we need to create a source. Now, we can create all of these things in advance, or we can create them as we go. Everything has a new button. It's really easier to do that if you're building something from scratch. And then our data sets, we've got our sources, but actually it's also looking for the type. So rather than say I'm getting it from a lake, I can say I'm getting it from Parquet. It is a Parquet file type that I'm creating this data set give it a good name, and then I can say, point it at my lake, and tell it where to go and find that Parquet file. And again, in our lake this time, ask us where to find it, and again, I can have this variable driven, or I can click on browse, dig into it, go to root, getting data from base at this point, because I'm doing a transformation, so I want clean data that's ready to transform, get my taxi information, get V1, get my Parquet format in case I've got multiple, and then I could do a single partition, but actually I want to cross all partitions so it will then filter dynamically, hit go, and then that is my first data set created. Now Parquet is interesting because Parquet actually has some metadata, some schema built into it. So I can tell it to allow things like schema drift, I can tell it to validate schema or just let it go through and I'll speed it up. I can have certain files and file sets that it uses, but I can actually see what it's expecting. So this is now a typed pipeline because I'm using a typed file format why Parquet is super useful for that kind of thing. Okay, let's create the other one. So let's get our zone data in there. So again, I'm just going to add a new data set. Again, it's Parquet. And I can then go pick my linked service. And again, I have to root through the lake, find the relevant place, and then hook it all up. Okay, so it's in root, it's in base, it's in my taxi zones now within public. And again, I have V1 and then Parquet. Now this isn't partition, so I've got all my files are straight in there, and again I could pick to a particular chunk, but I just want all of that as a single data set. So here go, creates it, and again I get my schema, my validation, and all of that stuff from there. Alright, so we need to join these data sets together, so step one, smash them together, and bring the columns from lookup over into taxi data. So I join, I can call it what I will, it's automatically going from the taxi data, because that's where I added the action, and then I can choose my right stream. What data do I want to join it to? I've got my other lookup stream. I can choose full, inner, left outer, right outer. I can just design the join type. Okay, then I've got my location ID, so I can go in there, grab those relevant bits. And then actually I've got some optimization. So lookup is tiny, it's only a few hundred rows. So we're looking at partitioning earlier. If I tell it to broadcast that, it'll create a copy of that data set on all executors rather than try and match partitions and kind of uh, co-locate them. So that's going to be faster and it's going to be quicker. So let's just broadcast that lookup out and that'll make life a lot easier. Okay, I can inspect the data set, I can see what it's going to look like. And if I had my debug cluster on, I can actually see the actual data rather than the planned data. Uh, but I don't have that turned on, so let's just carry on. So we're going to do a select. Um, we need to rename our columns and drop columns that we don't want. So this is taking that pickup data and making sure that the borough zone, service zone, is actually recognizable as coming from that pickup ID, the one that we joined to. So firstly, we can get rid of the duplicate location ID. We've already got that. 
and then call those the PU, borough, PU zone, all that kind of stuff, just so we can identify those columns once we join the other data set to it. Okay, that's now done, ready to go. So we can now move on to the next step. Now I could use the join again, and I'll do a similar thing, picking a left join this time. If I want to avoid any cardinality changes, I've also got a lookup. And that's very similar to the SSIs. Look, that's just a straight go find the first thing that joins and then bring the data back in. And choose that. Again, it's going to know that my pickup select is my primary. And I can choose my lookup stream as my second one. So I can see that there's a nice flow there of that stream being joined to my primary stream in a couple of places. Again, call it something sensible. Because we're all good SSIS developers back in the day. Um, and then I need to choose the columns that it's joining on. And again, it can join in multiple columns, and there's always performance impacts if you do very, very complicated joins. All the usual stuff with doing lookups. Optimize it. Again, I want to broadcast. I want to keep it as optimal as possible. And then again, I can see that it's bringing in those new columns, so I need to go and drop the additional ID and then rename the columns that I want. So again, following a fairly logical thing, and hopefully you're getting the idea now that you're going through layering up transforms to apply to a data frame the same as we do within a notebook itself. So these are my drop-off borough, my drop-off zone, which renames something sensible. And now that's ready to go. That's now my transformed data set, so I need to put it somewhere. So right down the bottom, I've got the sync. So like the sources, a sync is a destination. So I'm going to write the data somewhere, and that could be a database, it could be data lake, it could be a SQL data warehouse, loads of different places I can push data to. For now, just going to be a lake, fairly simple. Okay, so I'm going to create a new data set again. It's going to be Park A again, going into Enriched this time because it's transformed data. Call it something sensible. And then I can again root through my leg, pick the relevant place, and get it ready to write out. Now, this navigator will only allow me to pick places that exist, but again, I can configure that. So if we just pick a generic folder in Enriched, I normally have um, export and warehouse, depending on whether it's an ad hoc or it's a curated export. But I'm going to add a new folder into my definition and say, actually, this should be my T-Zone file. Okay, so finish that. I'll create that data set. Again, it doesn't have to do any validation because the file doesn't exist, so it's quite quick. And that's ready to go. That is my notebook replicated. That is my all the steps I need to follow. But it won't do anything on its own. This is just a set of logic. So the pipeline is what I need to schedule anything, to orchestrate anything. So under move and transform, I've got that new data flow activity. I can point to it the new data flow we just made. And then click finish, and that'll add it to our workspace. And then if we click into there, we go and look, so have a look at those details. We'll actually see that we don't get to pick a linked service for this. This is going to run using a built-in Databricks cluster. So I can choose the compute type. I can choose the cores. I can give it some information. I can choose a staging linked service if I'm going into something like SQL Data Warehouse and it wants to stage blob storage on the way for efficiency. But I don't get to run this on my own Databricks cluster anymore. Now, that might be something they change. I don't know how tied in that is. So looking at monitoring, I've got a pipeline one I did yesterday. I was naughty and didn't rename it. Have a look at that. So we've got some general information. We can see what I passed into it and what I got out, and that's more logging information it's kind of kind of useful just to see IDs and row counts and things but what's really useful is the data flow details so for each run I can go in and I can see the history for each step it went through what did I actually do there how many rows were in each partition how many chunks was that stream in on in memory on that cluster so for in terms of optimizing things and looking at cardinality and how it's changing, it's super, super useful. So you can then go back and optimize it and tweak it and do some low-level partition management. And that's it.